On today's show, Mr. Drew Cameron will help you execute on your sales process. Hey guys, Weldon Long here. Listen, before we get started today, I have a very special announcement. I have partnered with EGIA and the Contract University to create the ultimate HVAC sales system. This is not sales training. It is the comprehensive sales system that I have used in my companies and my clients' companies for 20 years. I like to say it's kind of like hiring me as your sales manager. I create the scripts and the presentations for lead coordination and the entire sales process. We customize it for you. I create your pricing models. I create your menu-based price cards that we use to present to the homeowners. I also do ongoing sales tracking and sales coaching for your entire team. Like I said, I essentially become your fractional sales manager, and I can implement this program whether you have an existing sales manager or not. Now listen, here's the important part. There are only 10 spots available in this program. After all, I can't manage hundreds of sales teams at the same time. This is what we call a We Do It For You program. All you have to do is to sit back, let me create your sales system from beginning to end, and watch the new system sales come in. Now, if you want to get more information information on this, go to mycontractuniversity.com forward slash ultimate or call David Delgado at the number below. Now, today we have a very special segment for Mr. Drew Cameron. We're launching our brand new course titled Sales Execution this month. And as usual, we like to give you a little taste of what the content is going to be like. So if you are a member, make sure to assign this to your team members. And if you're not a member, then sign up for a free 30 day trial and get access today. If you're watching this on Facebook, click the link below to sign up for the free trial. Now let's dive in with Drew Cameron. Hi, and welcome to Contractor University. I'm Drew Cameron. I'm going to be your host for this session of sales execution. We're going to talk about an evidence-based process to educate homeowners and uh, for optimum experiences and maximum results. Now when we talk about sales execution, we're talking about what you do in the home during the sales process. And in order to help a customer and facilitate the buying process, right? Because what we re come to realize is that sales is really a myth. We have never sold, nor have, will we ever sell anything to anybody. Nobody ever has. People choose to buy, they choose not to buy for their reasons and on their timeline. And so what we really have to realize is we have to get in alignment with their process. So that being said, let's go ahead and dive into the content. Now let's have a conversation about how do customers approach making this purchase, about heating and air conditioning, indoor air quality, generators, uh, large plumbing expenses, water heaters, water conditioning, things of that nature, where we're getting into thousands and thousands of dollars. Most of them apply the same buying process that they do everywhere else. They go ahead and comparison shop, whether they're doing that online or they're doing that in the store uh, when they buy other retail purchases. Uh, they're going to try to do that same approach in this process for buying home services because they don't know anything else. It's what they do most of their lives. It's what they do pretty much every day is they comparison shop. Very rarely do you not comparison shop. I mean, if you're sitting in a restaurant, you're probably not comparison shopping. However, when it comes to buying things, uh, retail goods and services and products and whatnot, and, and we're talking about electronics, consumer goods, appliances, clothing, uh, uh, cars, uh, food, all of that is, you know, can be bought and can be comparison shop. And like I said, much of that can be done online and much of that can be done in the retail facility. So when a customer goes to buy home services, they don't know anything else. And so what do they do? They apply the exact same process, not knowing that that would be the worst thing that they could do because that doesn't help them understand how to get good information from a good provider. Because at the end of the day, the most important decision they get to make is who they invite into their home. And that ultimately determines whether or not the products that they buy actually perform. And really at the end of the day, that's what they're buying. Performance is truly the product, not the things. You buy the results and the impacts and the outcomes and you get the things as a consumer. But if homeowners don't understand that when it comes time to buying heating and air conditioning and our other products and services that we offer as contractors, they're gonna apply the same comparison shopping approach. They'll call multiple providers to get multiple quotes unless they feel they have a very trusting relationship with the, uh, one provider that they have met or that they have been doing business with maybe for some time or maybe that has been referred to. But that's very rare. They will go ahead and comparison shop more often than not. So how does aligning with that process impact contractors? How does it lead to this disconnect that we have with customers? Because good contractors sometimes don't earn the business when in all reality they, they should because the customer doesn't know that they're not going to get a good experience and a good result and a good outcome if they don't deal with a good contractor. But if you're a contractor and you go ahead and just fall in alignment with their comparison shopping process, then you're gonna fall victim to that situation, that circumstance, that process. 
And it's going to lead to a disconnect because the customers are going to focus on the things, the commodities, and not the contractor and its people and its processes, which ultimately determine the performance. And so if you just go ahead and walk into a, a lead and you just succumb to what it is that they're doing and they tell you they're getting multiple quotes and nobody teaches them how to buy and where value comes from, then they're just going to go ahead and comparison shop it because that's what they know and it's what they can do because no one told them that they can't do it and that they shouldn't do it and that it won't serve them to, to the level that they desire. And so that's where contractors have to come and realize that that is a mistake. Now, the problem with that is, is that most contractors act like contractors. They think like contractors and they talk like contractors. They fail to realize that they are first and foremost a consumer. They were first and foremost a consumer before they ever went into the contracting business, while they're in the contracting business, and after they leave the contracting business, they will be a consumer. And they go out and they are seeing consumers. The problem is, is that they don't think and act and talk like a consumer when they're in the home. They think and act and talk like a contractor. And that leads to the disconnect. And, and the reality is, is you have to understand, if you were a consumer and you were in the position of the consumer that you're interfacing with, and you've never done business with this contractor before, or any contractor before, you never bought heating and cooling products and services before, uh, you, you wouldn't know how to do it. You get to do this maybe once or twice in your lifetime. It's a long-term investment, at least as long as you live in the home, or probably 15 to 20 years if, they, if you get a good result and you take care of the machines. Uh, it's expensive, it's not inexpensive, so it's a lot of money. And, and so there's a lot of unknowns and, and, and variables in there that a customer is basically living in fear of not knowing how to make this buying decision. So they apply a process that they know of comparing things. They take the least amount of information to try and assimilate a decision as to who should I do business with, right? Some customers will even put together a table or a chart or an Excel spreadsheet and they'll try and you know, uh, compare one contractor and their, their offering to another uh, as far as you know, brand, model, efficiency, capacity, size of equipment, uh, you know, warranties, price, the whole nine yards. And they don't take into consideration, it all comes down to the people and the processes. Number one, who I invite my home to design the system. The most important day in the life of the machine is not the day that it's installed, it's the day that it's designed, and then it's the day that it's installed, and then the day that that installation is verified. And then, of course, the system has to be maintained. But as contractors, we don't teach the customer this, then they don't know, and they apply the process that they do know, which is comparison shopping. So as contractors, we have to basically realize that consumers are consumers. We have to think like a consumer, and we have to teach them what they need to know about our process, our industry, the standards that they shouldn't compromise on to get the right result. And that's the they don't have to do business with us, but they should do business with somebody like us who teaches them how to buy and where to get the best value for their dollar. So I have a framework which I call the trusted authority approach. And as a, as a contractor, as a, as a provider, as a technician or a salesperson in the home, working with a homeowner, you have to basically realize that when a customer approaches uh, this purchase, they do it, like I said, unknowing, maybe even untrusting as to who they're doing business with. More often than not, uh, they get pushed into the market by a technician because most customers don't come to the conclusion that they want to replace their system. Unless a compelling offer is put to them in a marketing campaign, um, they tend to come through the channel of service or maintenance uh, technician flipping over an opportunity uh, to sell that themselves or flip it over to a comfort advisor who takes advantage of running the lead to go ahead and quote the system to a customer. And so the customer basically, when you think about this, if we go back and we rewind this, and we say, where does the customer start? Well. The idea is, is that their objective is, is to get a, a beneficial ha uh, outcome that they're happy with, and we should have that same mutual focus to get beneficial results for them as well as for us, and their happiness as well as our happiness. So how do we do that? Number one, you have to realize that you as a company start out as an anonymous entity more often than not, meaning they don't know you, maybe they don't know anybody. It's the first time they're buying heating and cooling uh, products and services, and so they don't know anybody, so they don't know what to do. And so you as a company, they're, you know, they're ignorant to you. It doesn't mean that you're ignorant, it means that they're ignorant to you. They're unaware that you exist. And so once they do a little bit of research, they maybe ask around, they go online, they go to the yellow pages, uh, you know, they talk to some people who maybe they see and had heating and air conditioning in their neighborhood, or maybe somebody, they heard some conversations at work, and they talk to some people. And so contractors then become a known resource. And so they are now aware of you. 
Okay, that doesn't mean they want to do business with you, but that does mean that they might go ahead and think that you're worthy of a consideration. I do imagine through some of their research, whether that be online or through friends, <clears throat> that they find out that some contractors are not worthy of consideration. Maybe they heard a bad story about that particular contractor, and so they dismiss that. Okay, so we went from anonymous entity to known resource, but got kicked out of the process and not even gonna make it to the cut for the, you know, getting called or even invited to the home. But if you're worthy of consideration, that means the customer's been intrigued a little bit enough to hear more about you and what you have to offer as a, as a contractor. And so typically this is where a technician enters the picture if it's a technician opportunity, meaning that the system's down or the system's in maintenance mode and the customer has a technician come out. This is where the technician comes in and builds what we call the POT or the position of trust. And so, uh, you know, you have to realize you're walking in the door at this place where they've called, they've scheduled an appointment, and we're now sending out a technician in that particular case. And so you walk in the door with your uniform and your truck, maybe your ID badge, a business card, and almost you have like the same uh, credibility as a doctor or a dentist wearing a white lab coat, right? Because number one, I've paid for you to get there and you're wearing the uniform and you have tools and you basically are going to get to work. And so you almost get implicit trust and authority right out of the gate, meaning that doesn't mean I'll do business with you, but it does mean that I at least trust you to go do something, right? And so from there, I have interest in hearing what you have to say. I wanna see what you have to find, I wanna hear what you have to say, and then I wanna basically consider my next step. Now this is where the comfort advisor comes in. The comfort advisor does not have the trusted authority, has to earn that trusted authority you know, coming in the door because again, they're typically just wearing maybe the, uh, the company shirt um, and maybe they don't have a company vehicle, but the customer also knows they're a salesperson. No matter if you call yourself a design consultant or design tech, comfort advisor, home, home comfort expert, systems consultant, engineer, whatever. Right, um, so the title doesn't matter, but you have to understand this is where the cu the customer is coming through the process in their mind, right? And so technicians come in as the trusted authority. Comfort advisors have to earn that trusted authority and realize, you know, that uh, they have to earn that position of trust coming in the door. So you don't want to push the envelope too quickly uh, in the sales process when you're with a customer as a comfort advisor, as a technician. Uh, they don't ever see you coming. They don't suspect you to some extent, and so you have a little bit of a, a little bit of a wide berth, if you will, for communication. And we'll talk about that in future sessions. So, as a trusted authority, as a technician, you can proceed and know that the customer uh, basically is interested in what you have to say. Will listen typically to what you have to say because again, they've paid for that. As a comfort advisor, you're coming in. You have to earn that authority, and you have to then earn the right for them to even listen to you. I do imagine that there have been some contractors that have come in the door with customers and for whatever reason, just had an agenda, inflicted it upon the customer. The customer didn't really like what they had to say. Maybe they, maybe they even tried to give a quote over the phone or over the email um, and didn't spend that much time asking questions, didn't really kind of dig into two things, too many things, and the customer got you know, a little uh, wonky with what, what the cust uh, contractor was doing and decided not to consider that contractor even any further. So they, they, you know, that contractor doesn't become a trusted advisor at that point, even if they submit a quote. The customer says, yeah, I didn't like the way they treated me. I didn't like the way they acted toward my kids or my dogs or my, my significant other, and I'm not going to have them come back. Or they tracked dirt on my floor or uh, you know, said something. Now, as a technician, you can also burn the trust, too. And, and so you got to be very careful when you earn the trust. So they're interested, and then as an advisor, they at least basically have a desire to hear what you have to say. Okay, so again, they may have called, you know, if it's a technician, you usually call one technician who then maybe quotes it, but then at that point, they decide, hey, you know what, I'm gonna jump back into the game and I'm gonna call a couple other contractors to get quotes now on replacing the system. Typically, if it's a repair scenario, a technician, they just go ahead with the uh, advisement of the repair more often than not. Sometimes they'll shop it, but very rarely, right? It's like going to your dentist. Dentist diagnoses a cavity, rarely do you shop it. You typically go with, you know, what the dentist tells you to do. Same with a, your surgeon or your doctor, right? But as technicians, as comfort advisors, uh, that doesn't mean that, you know, once they've called us, that they may not call somebody else. So you could still earn that position of trusted advisor, and they have a desire to hear what you have to say, but that does, again, does not mean that they're gonna do business with you. The ultimate goal, obviously, is to become the trusted provider, right? The person who they uh, award the work to, because that means that they have 
a connection with you. They have a connection with you, your company, your story, your product, your solution, and how that's gonna impact them in their lives, right? It's connected to them. They see how it's gonna solve a problem. They decide they wanna take action, and they're emotionally moved, right, by some emotional currency that they have to take action. And from there, though, once we earn the business, we don't wanna just earn the business once, we wanna earn the business on a repeat basis, right? And so they become under our warranty program, they become under our maintenance agreement program, and hopefully we become their trusted partner over time. Not just somebody that we have a relationship with who's done business with us, but is under contractual relationship to do business with us on a regular basis. That's the beauty of the service agreement and the, and the extended warranty. If we just have a customer in our database who just does business with us, we're just a, a trusted provider. We may not be the always trusted provider. So the ultimate goal is to keep migrating up the ladder. And so if you're a trusted partner, that means you've made an impression. They're a raving fan. If asked about you, they'll say great things about you. They like you, they, they voted to do business with you by giving you their dollars, and they'll repeat that business with you. But that's not our ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to basically flip the script and uh, get them to be the trusted emissary or the ambassador or the evangelist. The person who loves us so much that not only will they do business with us again, but they're going to rave about us unsolicited. I mean, they're going to be active promoters amongst their friends, their family, their network, uh, people that their uh, kids go to school with, the uh, sports, uh, weekend sports with the kids, the church, uh, work, wherever. They're going to be active promoters of you. Uh, they, they may even leave their, their lawn sign out in front of their house you know, promoting you because they believe in you so, so uh, highly because that's the ultimate goal, is that they are promoting you. We're not asking for them to promote us, but they are actively promoting us, and hopefully we're rewarding that as well, All right? And so below the line is where marketing and advertising kind of drives opportunity, if you will, and above the line is where sales and service kind of kicks in, the operations, and the people take over you know, up to that point. So below the line is the messaging that happens before the phone rings or before the web forms you know, come in, before anybody has ever typically go, probably gone into their house, if we have gone to their house, hopefully those are reinforcing the messages and the promises that we put out there into the marketplace. Okay, so from the trust authority approach, what you have to realize is the goal is to get and share the truth, not the sale. The outcome is never the, you know, the result of what we go after. That is going to happen, right? We hope that it happens. We hope that we earn our business. But the objective is to get and keep customers of their own free will. We want them to choose to do business with us versus choosing not to do business with us. And when you know the truth, you will understand the customer's confusion. When you understand the truth behind what it is that you're trying to accomplish and how they go about this process, you'll understand more often than not the reason they get multiple quotes is typically it's a lack of trust, but it's mostly a lack of trust due to the confusion. Even if you've been their provider for years, they may still shop you. Why? Because they don't trust you with this large of a purchase. And so they don't understand what they need to take into consideration. So it's our job as a contractor to educate them. You can't shortchange the process either. If you shortchange the process, you short circuit the system, then you're going to shortchange the customer, your coworkers, your company, yourself, your family, and your community. Meaning, if we shortchange this process, if you get real busy and you start running four, five, six leads a day, and you start taking shortcuts in your sales process, okay, the customer's going to short circuit the buying process too. And you're going to fall on deaf ears. You're going, to fall, you're going to fall into the sea of sameness. You're going to look and sound and feel like every other contractor that's out there. And they will comparison shop you. The customer experience during the sales process shouldn't change because the calendar changes, because the thermostat changes, okay? And it gets too cold or it gets too hot and you get so busy. We shouldn't shortchange that. Customers deserve us being, you know, playing this game at the highest level, 100% all the time. Okay, so if you need more people when you get busy, then get more people. But don't shove more leads into the system and onto your people. You basically you know, compromise the buying experience for the customer, and then they'll go ahead and they'll basically burn that lead. Your technicians and salespeople will burn those opportunities to convert these people, and now your brand starts taking hits, and the brand starts you know, getting damaged. And that's, that's a reputation thing, meaning you might be a premium price company because you're right priced, but the customer just sees you as high priced when they just start comparison shopping because you all look and sound and feel exactly alike. <clears throat> And so they go ahead and then this, have this bad impression that you're two to three thousand dollars more than everybody else, when in reality you're two to three thousand dollars different than everybody else. But if th those differences don't make the difference in the customer's mind, they won't make a difference in the customer's lives, and therefore you won't make a difference in the customer's life. And then when they get basically are asked about who to do business with, 
They'll basically just say that you're overcharging and ripping people off and your brand will take hits. So don't do that. So the goal is, again, to let the customer get the best experience so they get the outcome that they desire, right? Because at the end of the day, we educate a consumer to the best of our ability. We have to realize that an educated consumer is not our best customer, a motivated customer is. Because a motivated customer takes action. Awesome content right there from Mr. Drew Cameron, as usual. Be sure to share this on Facebook, and if that's where you're watching this, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye for now.